What is good, ladies and gentlemen? Welcome to another SK Wealth Academy podcast. Now, if again, I just want to begin today's podcast, which is going to be about why social media is much worse than you believe it is. And I'm going to go into reasons why. Now, of course, the, the big thing for the past couple months has been the social dilemma, but the social dilemma didn't really even, um, from what I understand, because I only watched like 15 minutes before I got bored and shut it off because it was telling me nothing I didn't already know. Uh, but from, I spoke, I have spoken to friends that have watched the whole thing and from what they told me, it did not hit on this point that I'm going to explore in this particular podcast. Now, just remember, because I'm going to be so harsh on YouTube, I wouldn't be surprised if I get to a deep platform after this. But if I disappear from YouTube, you can always find me on K.IM. So that's Kim.Indigo uh, Mary. So that is the platform uh, basically that allows content creators like myself to monetize our content because as I told you in my old channel, I had over 13 million views and earned about $3.05 because YouTube demonetized all of my videos in which I was just talking about sound money, principles, what the gold standard is, um, why uh, gold coins, the, the face value of gold coins and silver coins is all messed up today and it's part of the disinformation campaign. So I was just really spitting too much truth for Google, who are the owners of YouTube, to uh, allow any of my content to be spread, to uh, so they shadow ban. Even shadow, having my content been shadow banned, I still received over 13 million views, but no money. So um, K.IM, uh, is the platform at which they will allow people, content creators, to monetize and they don't censor the truth. So YouTube is among the worst of the social media platforms. I'm going to explain why it is. So I, again, um, K.IM, I would already be there, but it's still in the beta stage. It's not in the fully functional stage. But if you go check, and there's no uh, www, you just go to type in k.im on your internet browser, it'll bring up the website, and if you see it's func fully functional, you can search for SK Wealth Academy, and my content will be there, because I actually have loads of other content I've already pre-recorded, but I'm not uploading it on YouTube, because I'm so sick of YouTube, I'm just, for now, or you can always find me on skwealthacademy.podbean.com, because I also make the content that I make available here on YouTube, available on Podbean um, as well. So I'm withholding a lot of the other content that I've already recorded because I have no doubt I could be receiving the same 40, 50, 60, 70,000 views per video that I was receiving before YouTube started shadow banning all my content uh, with, if, if I'm you know, at a platform that's not censoring the truth. So that's why I'm withholding, because I, I put in a lot of effort into making a lot of these videos, a lot of thought, and um, you know, I would like to reach as many people as possible, especially since all of the stuff I do on social media, it's not, I'm not making any money off of it right now, and haven't for years, so I would at least at a minimum like it to reach as many people as possible. So why social media is much worse than we think it is? It's because it's designed to engage us specifically through multiplying and strengthening our confirmation bias, which means we're never gonna understand the truth about anything. So the, the reason it's much worse than we think it is, it's not because it tar targets addictive use, it's not because it addicts you to engage in the platforms, but it's how it addicts you to engage as platforms that is the harmful thing. It's not even necessarily that it dumbs us down by targeting the emotional centers of our brain, known as the amygdala, so it doesn't contribute at all to critical thinking. In fact, it just it triggers our emotional responses, which makes us more illogical human beings and makes us more, much more susceptible to falling victim to, surprisingly, fake content that social media loves to spread and loves to spread as factual. And that's all bad, but there's you know the aspect of social media platform architecture that's far more sinister than anything discussed in The Social Dilemma or anything you've probably read about in other articles is the fact that it preys upon its users' confirmation bias. That's why 
we have witnessed the inability of people to hold civil discussions and have rational disagreements with people today. And why just screaming and yelling and acting like a, a two-year-old infant is the means by which people communicate their disagreements in recent years. So I always have said for a very long time now that something has drastically changed from the time when I was a child. And uh, I, I'm pretty sure it's because of the fact that there's been an explosion in the adoption of social media platform usage and this explosion in the adoption of this usage has created much more confirmation bias in people all around the world. So I'm pretty certain that that's what's contributing to the inability of people to be civil with each other in disagreements today. So social media has never been the product because social media makes all of its money by marketing you. You are the product. There's no such thing as Social media is free. I hear that all the time. People always say, oh, social media is free. That's why I use, use it. If, it's, if there's no monetary payment to use the service, then it's doing something much more sinister. We can't be so naive to keep repeating that falsehood that it's free. It's an exchange of medium that's being. So what is being exchanged in order for you to use their platform and not pay monetary compensation to the owners, they're basically mining all the data that you provide for willingly for free on the platforms. You know, you're telling them your thoughts, you're telling them your opinions on politics, you're telling them your opinions upon the, about the government, you're allowing governments to track you if you say anything negative about their policies, if you say anything negative about the authority of the state or how dumb people are becoming, then you become deplatformed, then you know they follow who your friends are, see if your friends are, are feel the same way, and you all become part of this uh, surveillance state. So that is what you are giving up, which is far worse than actually even paying like $100 a month to use the platforms. What we willingly give up in exchange for using these platforms is far worse than a $100 monthly payment to use the platforms. And again, um, social media provides or you can access content posted by like other friends or people you follow and, and it only if you offer mass amounts of data about yourself to the company owners. If they thought you did not provide this or the majority of people right, were not engaging their platforms on a very consistent basis, that platform would no longer be free. There would be a charge to use the system because they are not getting more from your usage than you are getting from using the platform. They always will be getting more. If the platform requires no monetary compensation, that means they always, the owners are always extracting more value from your usage of the platform than you are extracting value from using that platform. So remember this. And it's almost, okay, here's an, anal an analogy. If you're a farmer and you wanted a website because you wanted to sell your goods at the local farmer market, you wanted a website to advertise you know, like where your stand is going to be at the farmer's market, what type of fruits and vegetables you're going to be selling. And so you decide, you worked out at a barter agreement, right? With a website designer saying, hey, I'll give you a certain weight of vegetables that I grow that are organic, no pesticides, and totally healthy in exchange for building my website. And then that's the agreement you come upon. Would you say that that person built a website for you for free just because you didn't provide any monetary compensation? Of course not. You, you, have, you bartered and it was just an exchange for, of goods and services were swapped. That's exactly what these social media platforms are there's an exchange that's being swapped. Most people just don't figure out what they're giving up in order to be able to use these platforms for no monetary fee. So every time you access Facebook or Google, even the Google search engine or Instagram or Twitter, there's an exchange of services taking place. You are, pro are providing monable data about your interests, your thoughts, your political leanings to Mark Zuckerberg, owner of Facebook, to Jack Dorsey, owner of Twitter, to Eric Schmidt and Sergey Mikhailovich Brin, but now Sunder Pichai in exchange, and so many 
of us that are people of color are so naive, so gullible that we think, oh, look, a brown person in charge of a powerful corporate uh, entity. I'm going to support this brown person. He must be good. I don't know where this delusion comes from that just because a person of color rises to a position of power that we necessarily need to support that person because that person is doing dastardly deeds. We should be dramatically and strongly opposed to that person, not supporting that person. But I see so many people of color just support another person of color uh, and say, congratulations, oh, good on you for rising to this position of, of power without really seeing how corrupt they are in their positions of power. So, this is the absurdity of the upside down world that social media platform owners have created and all placed us in. I mean, I know some of you probably use no social, social media, good on you. And I wouldn't had I not had a new business, which will be my online SK Wealth Academy to promote. If I had no business reasons to use social media, I'd be completely off social media. But the owners of social media have moved us all away from rationality, away from intellect, towards blind obedience, towards the state, towards authority, and strongly held unmovable opinions that are completely uncritical. And the fact is that most of us now live in an echo chamber populated only with relationships in which everyone we surround ourselves with believes the exact same things and no one ever challenges our beliefs, which means, of course, we're going to remain as stupid as possible for the rest of our lives. So I'm not going to cover the absurd beliefs about, for example, uh, about the politically spread dangers of this virus that is, are being used to rationalize these economic lockdowns all around the world that they promote as science. But I'm going to make actually another podcast about this, about the absurdity. I'm going to show you the absurdity of how mass media reports on studies, that the only way to really actually know the truth is to read the actual study and the methodology of the study itself. And if you don't do this, you're just a moron for quoting whatever, uh, uh, you know, a mass media story says about, you know, supposedly, allegedly about what a study said. Because I'll, I'll prove to you beyond a shadow of a doubt that in the great majority of times, it's complete propaganda and misinformation in these mass media stories about certain studies, including all the studies about the virus. So if you don't go to the source itself, read the actual study and read the methodology that was used to make the conclusions that are proven in that study, then you should not be repeating any of this information. I'm saying that as, as strongly as I can. So the reason I'm not going to go into the, the, the absurd beliefs about the danger of this virus is because... I've already made multiple, just go on my YouTube channel before <laughs> these videos are deleted. I already made multiple videos about this topic, so it's, I'm not going to repeat that here. But one of the most dangerous consequences of massive adoption of social media platforms, especially to receive news, is the fact that the only news these social media platforms will feed you is news that reinforces and never challenges your current beliefs. So it prevents, and YouTube is one of the worst, right? Because some of these will keep, some of these social media platforms will actually keep feeding you, feeding your confirmation bias, even when your confirmation bias is correct, right? So your confirmation bias could either be correct or it could be incorrect. But YouTube, they will ban you from ever finding any dissenting information if the dissenting information to common news narratives is correct. While at the same time, they will keep feeding all your confirmation biases are, that are incorrect. So it's almost, it's like the worst of both worlds. And that they are a great contributor to the moral decay of society. I'll give you another example because when, okay, I live in, in Asia and there's like, you know, these ads that are perpetually playing on YouTube videos. 
from this company called Eventbrite where they have a bunch of teenagers screaming, I got in, I got in, and then ding, some, something flashing like they made $8,000, $10,000, $30,000, some, sometimes even upwards of $30,000. So people are like, what is this? What is this website that 15, 16, or actually I think they're, they're saying they got, I'll explain, when they say they got in, they're basically uh, giving their surprise reactions to, uh, not to receiving notifications that they were admitted to a university they apply to. So they're probably like around 17 years old. So people are curious, saying, our 17 year olds making 30,000 and 15,000 dollars apparently with ease using this Eventbrite company. And th those ads are ubiquitous in Australia, in New Zealand, in many countries in Asia, I think some in Europe. I'm not so sure about in the Americas if this is running, but it's, it's, it's as ubiquitous as that ad that uh, that guy, can't remember his name off the top of my head, but the guy that said, I'm in my garage with my brand new Lamborghini, but you know what's better than a brand new Lamborghini? Knowledge. And that, that ad was everywhere. This ad for Eventbrite's everywhere. So I was, uh, you know, already you can't scam me. I'm scam proof because I lived for so many years in Philadelphia, saw so many three card Monty scams being run in the street, ran into every possible street scam possible. I am scam proof. So when I saw that within 10 seconds of this ad, I knew it was a complete scam. So I was like, why is YouTube unethically and immorally running this scam? Laying this company that's trying to deliberately defraud people out of their hard earned money just run rampant and wild and pushing it all over their platform. That tells me that the owners of YouTube are totally immoral. You know, and then when I checked into it, okay, what I'm gonna tell you is what other people that debunked it, because I just looked at other debunking. I just looked for Eventbrite debunking. So what, what, what is Eventbrite? First of all, they said the teenagers, they're the ones that said, not me. So they're the ones, the debunkers, but I'm going to take their word for it because it makes sense that the teenager screaming, I got in, and then something showing they made like $30,000 from Eventbrite was just, they were merging two things together. So they're stealing uh, videos of teenagers that uploaded uh, their responses to getting into university and then trying to make like they're screaming and jumping around with joy was about making all this money on their website. So that's totally fraudulent. And yet, that's, you know, it took me two minutes, two minutes to find that this was fraudulent according to other people, right? So YouTube obviously themselves could find it's completely fraudulent and should have banned it, but yet they're pushing this. It's been ubiquitous for months on end. They've been pushing this total scam to defraud people. And so uh, again, and then uh, they, the other debunkers said that the other people are just actors. And they found like websites where they say, hire me for voiceovers. I'll say whatever you want me to say about your company, how great it is. It doesn't have to be true. I'm an actor, I'll say whatever you want. And they, they found and they showed the screenshots of these people on these sites where you can hire them to say whatever you want about. And that's what Eventbrite was using. So that just shows me, right, that YouTube is such an immoral platform. They will shadow ban Total Truth while pushing the most unethical, immoral companies out there that intend to defraud people of their hard-earned money. And they will not mo allow people to monetize. So that's why I encourage everyone to eventually migrate off of YouTube if you can. So that about wraps up what I want to say regarding uh, why social media is much more harmful than you believe it to be because it really preys upon your confirmation bias and reinforces it, which of course is going to retard your progression of intellect tremendously and make you regress instead of progress even as you get older. You'll be constantly getting dumber and dumber and dumber if you keep falling victim to this confirmation bias loop that social media platforms all, um, all basically favor in order to keep you engaged on their platforms. Okay, so thanks so much for watching. As always, remain intensely curious. And if you're watching me on k.im, don't forget to subscribe. Please do subscribe. Please do comment. Please do like. If I imagine they're going to have similar mechanisms uh, by which we can grow our channel. So that would really help us. So thanks so much. And until next time, remain intensely curious. So long.